the straight path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your favors, not the path of those who incur your wrath, nor of go astray. Amen. Though restricted just to, to being caring and kind, but that, of course, is the primary thing as he serves his God and his faith. But as the Muslim American spokesman, he has provided for us a great contribution to our nation in bringing people of all faiths into harmony and understanding, of which today is one of those times. And it's also a tribute to him, to his faith, to his leadership, that he has been invited, as Sergeant Bilal said, to be the first Muslim to give the invocation on the floor of the Senate tomorrow. Also, he has represented al-Islam before the President of the United States on more than one occasion, and of course, given his loyal and unswerving uh, religious leadership in support of our nation uh, during the difficult times of the Gulf War. And that's no small thing. As you know, in, in times of, of crisis, it's, it's, it's very important to have leadership that understands all of the, the difficulties of those times, and he is one of, one of those leaders, and we appreciate that very much. And so I would ask at this time if you would welcome with me to the Pentagon, a great American, a great Muslim leader, Imam W. Dean Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. And it's peace be on you. We witness that there is but one Lord creator of the heavens and the earth for all of us. And we witness that Muhammad is the last prophet and his servant, his servant and his messenger. And we pray the prayers and the peace upon Muhammad and what follows of that well-known excellent salutation. Uh, Chaplain Esterling, it is a great honor for me to have this privilege to be invited here uh, at the Pentagon uh, to be given a lunch and have all of the wonderful people that I know so very well who work with us, our imams and, uh, and, uh, and the sisters and all who work with schools, with our schools. Uh, it's the feeling that, I, that has me right now overwhelmed. I'm, I'm, I'm like floating in the air. <laughs> I never dreamed that uh, we would receive such an invitation. Uh, and when the question was asked, uh, how did uh, you get an imam to come to the Pentagon? I said, I would like to ask the same question. <laughs> I would quickly, uh, I, I wish I could say more because uh, I wish I could share more of you, more with you, share with you more of what's happening right here, right now. Um, but I will quickly try to uh, acquaint uh, our distinguished uh, guest that has uh, honored us by, ha by being present today from the, from the Army military and staff and, and uh, here at the Pentagon and uh, your guests that are outside of your, your staff, outside of the Pentagon. I would like to quickly give a description of our religion uh, and from, <coughs> from our, from our uh, situation as African-American Muslims. And I will begin by saying, uh, though we uh, don't see any compatibility anymore for what we believe as Muslims today with what we believed when we were called the Nation of Islam uh, in America, <clears throat> there are still many things that we still cherish because we see that those things were, uh, if not uh, taken from the religion of Islam as it's practiced uh, throughout the world, uh, those things are in accord with the religion of Islam as is seen and understood throughout the world. And that is the emphasis on discipline, cleanliness, high morals, um, uh, industry. Um, uh, we love that and we love to see our men uh, disciplined, and uh, having a great, great respect for discipline. And now to, to, to speak from, uh, from uh, my knowledge of, uh, of our holy book, the Quran, and uh, the life of our prophet, the sunnah of our prophet, uh, as you perhaps know, 
for us, we, uh, we have no priesthood, no clergy. Actually, there's no clergy for us. Uh, Any uh, one can qualify as our the imam to lead us, to lead the congregation in prayer, uh, to deliver the um, what we call the khutbah, or the sermon, or the speech. It's a lecture uh, for us, the formal lecture. Anyone can qualify qualify for that. The qualification is that they know, they have the knowledge, and they have the uh, uh, the character, the character. They have the knowledge and also the character, the good character that we're looking for. Uh, and <coughs> now, I'm going to address discipline. That's what I'm addressing. Discipline is very, very significant for us in our religion. Our religion begins by directing our attention to discipline. Uh, God says that <coughs> he has given us this religion upon the pattern of the universe itself. And uh, to understand what God means by that pattern uh, that we see sustaining the universe, or holding the universe all together as uh, one continuous uh, uh, system of matter, to understand that, to understand that, uh, that uh, God points to obedience uh, and discipline in the heavens. That these stars, these bodies we see that make up this uh, cosmic unit world of ours, they all follow a law. They all have their discipline, and they all they all uh, uh, share one discipline, which is the universal system, the system, the, the system, the systemic world, the systemic universe. That system, that system, which is a discipline. And then, then if we understand by that, that God, that God is saying that it's inherent in us to appreciate discipline, to want a discipline. And we believe that our Quran, our Quran provides that discipline. That's most essential for us. Um, man is patterned on the pattern that God has, uh, has in when we view the universe itself. And uh, it doesn't mean that we are... Uh, that we are big like the universe. No. God says, think not that you are big like the universe. The universe is bigger than you. And I like that because I've, I've had a lot of trouble in my life trying to handle things that were too big for me. When I, when I, when I digested that, I start feeling much better. <laughs> uh, yes, now I'll quickly go to what, uh, what, what is very obvious for us, and that is the practices of the religion. Most important for us, is our, what we call Arkan al-Islam al-Khamsa, five essential practices for us in religion. The first of them being to witness that there is one God for everybody. One God for everybody. And to witness that that God has, uh, has angels. And that God, that God has revealed uh, uh, mes uh, messages uh, to, to, to many, many prophets, to every people. We don't believe any race or any people has been neglected by God. That God, over this long time that we've been on this earth, has, re has sent prophets or messengers to everybody. And uh, to believe in those prophets and to believe in the scriptures that they brought. And I heard one uh, uh, Palestinian uh, brother, he was saying, he said, do you know that if we don't believe in Jesus Christ, that we are not Muslims? And I've, I've never heard it put that way, but he's right. If we don't believe in Jesus Christ, we're not Muslims. Any of the prophets that are established as prophets, and most of the Judaic prophets and the, Christ, the Christian uh, the prophets are the same for Muslims. They are the same. And if we don't believe in any of them, then we can't be a Muslim. Uh, the brother said, we, do you know you can't, you can't follow Muhammad unless you accept Jesus? I said, that's true. <laughs> but putting it that way, you definitely never heard it put that way, you know, so you hesitate to say that's true. I, it took me about a minute almost. <laughs> But I had to agree, yes, that's true, because God says we have to accept all of his, and not only that, we have to accept that every scripture that came to them was legitimate, was from God. So we have to respect the scripture too, though we believe that scripture not, hasn't remained the same. So uh, we don't follow the scripture of other people, and, uh, and you don't follow the scripture of us, you know, that's understood. Uh, and we believe that other scriptures uh, have been changed or altered over time, over a period of time. But we believe that the, the essence, the essence of pardon me, the essence are the same. And therefore we respect the essence of all the great faith, especially Christianity and Ju Judaism also. Uh, the, the next, uh, uh, what, uh, what we have to recognize other than just the God, the one God and his prophets, and we say 
to, to acknowledge Muhammad is to acknowledge all prophets. That's the point. When we say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, I bear witness that there is but one Allah, one God, and we say Muhammad, wa ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, we are saying that we witness that we witness to all the prophets because Muhammad is the one who established for us that all the prophets are God's prophets. So when we witness him, we are witnessing to all the prophets. And we are witnessing to something else that's very important. Muslims have uh, uh, very few of them, uh, though, and we appreciate that because it's, it's, it's almost strange to me that any Muslim can believe that a prophet is God, a man is God. But we have had that problem. Um, even in America, we were introduced into to the religion, and that way we were told that a man is God. Uh, and when we say, and we witness that Muhammad is a prophet, we're also saying we do not see our prophet as God. So every time we say we believe in God, uh, we declare that God is one for all, we have to also say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. So that keeps it clear that Muhammad is not God. He can't be God. He's only the messenger of God. Uh, that's the first pillar for us. The second one is to make prayer. And prayer for us is very important, very essential. And I'm sure that some, of, some people have made a little problem for you insisting that they make their prayers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's understandable because once the Muslim knows he's supposed to make his prayer, is he takes it very serious and it's, it's hard for him to accept that he can't make his prayer. No matter what situation he's in, he feels he should make his prayer. But, uh, but for, uh, we should know the whole religion. When we know the whole religion, we know that there, there are allowances for us. Our religion is also a rational religion. So allowances are made for us. If we can't make a prayer right now, I haven't made my noon prayer. I'm traveling and I, have, I still should make my noon. I haven't made it. I intend to make it up later. And the Prophet Muhammad put great strong emphasis on respecting uh, the one who invites you. Be a good guest. <laughs> so we have that obligation too. And uh, since there's an allowance for us to make up our prayers later, that's what we do. We make them up later. But it is very important. If I had to miss my prayer every day like this, make it up every day like this, then I have to work on a work on that problem, so that would be a real problem. I have to work on that. <laughs> we can't do it every day. <laughs> and um, the uh, chaplain Esterling, he was so, so understanding and so much concerned that he has told me that the, pre uh, that, uh, that the preparations were made and we could make it around two or something, but he explained to me and said, and I saw what the problem was, so I told him we can make them up later at another place. Uh, now, the prayer, very essential. It's uh, it, it's, uh, it, we have to do it five times. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. It's a devotion. It's a discipline. We have to do it five times daily. The fajr is dawn before the sun comes up, and then the dhuhr the, at the right immediately afternoon, as soon as the, there's an indication that it's afternoon. That's the time to make the noon prayer. And then asr, which follows behind that prayer, uh, while the sun is declining, going toward the, uh, the sunset, but not yet the, uh, where we say the sun is nearing to set, uh, uh, thinking of it as sunset. And then sun af right immediately after sunset, and then um, af uh, after the sun, all appearance of sunset has gone from the sky and it's dark. The Aisha is called night prayer. The five prayers, very important for Muslims. And in, in those five prayers are steps. We call them uh, the steps of prayer, which, which, which all says to us that the Muslim life must be a disciplined life. Muslim life must be a life after the order of the universe, a disciplined and orderly universe, follow laws, and it doesn't disobey those laws. Uh, after prayer is charity, and uh, we share this with the Christi Christians. Uh, I believe that Christians are the most charitable people we can find hardly anywhere, and we love you for that. Very charitable people, and I know that Christ symbolizes charity for you, one of, one of, the, one of the symbols that Christ, uh, Christ holds for you, uh, that meaning that Christ holds for you, and we honor that and cherish it so much. And then after charity, uh, we have um, uh, fasting, and we fast the whole month of Ramadan. It's a month that uh, uh, has, has from t uh, normally about 30 days, sometimes 29, sometimes 29 days. And we fast that whole month during the daylight hours. Uh, Ramadan is approaching now. Muslims right now are thinking about going uh, the fast in the month of Ramadan. And uh, <clears throat> the last uh, essential of those five is Hajj. And for us, Hajj symbolizes uh, not only the commemoration of the prophet Abraham that we all identify with, the Judaic uh, faith and Christian faith and the Muslim faith, and the, and the Muslim. We all identify uh, him as the patriarch 
or as Father Abraham. Peace be upon him and all the prophets. Uh, but uh, important for us, even in a, in, in a sense just, just, as, just as strong, is that that Hajj, that pilgrimage we make to Mecca, uh, it focuses upon the unity of humanity. All people are seen going there from all nationalities, from all races and all nationalities. And when we get there, we have to take off our, our national dress or our uh, cultural dress. And um, many people are not aware of this. Our religion does not only accept this, your cultural distinction, that's like the African-American. If he wants to have a cultural distinction within the international culture of Muslim, Islam does not only accept that, but stress that he should keep the excellence of his culture, and Islam should complement that, but not seek to change it. We love our distinction as people, racial distinction, and I know this might sound to you, some people, they don't want to hear anything about somebody who's conscious of race. Yes, we should be conscious of race. We want racial dignity, we want racial distinction. We want cultural distinction, we want that. And even within Islam, we want that. We don't want to copy the culture of another Muslim, that's not being a Muslim. Copy the excellence of Islam, the excellence of Muhammad, and then build upon that and have your own unique identity. That's what we stress. That's what we stress. We also stress this, that uh, we owe an allegiance to Christian, the Christian people. Uh, Prophet Muhammad established for us that if anyone is doing a defiling, any Christ sacred thing sacred to Christians, we are to join the Christians in the fight, if we have to, fight that person, or fight those people. Uh, as, and also, we have to understand <coughs> that our religion didn't come to establish itself over or everybody else. God says that our religion will be the dominant, or predominant, or the prevailing religion. And I do believe that. We have to believe that. God says I do believe that's coming. But it doesn't mean that we are not going to have to coexist and live with other people. We are. And, and our religion uh, wants us to recognize the excellence of other people and other faiths and work and cooperate with them. And uh, uh, in a situation like this where we are a small minority and uh, none of the Muslims are a great minority, we better, we better learn that our religion encourages that. <laughs> and <laughs> it's very important for us to understand that and build, build, build on what is good. And don't try to to stamp our name on our label on everything. Um, be, be, like, be intelligent. That's what our religion asks of us, to be excellent. Our religion encourages excellence. Pursue excellence. You know, Prophet Muhammad, I'm, I'm, I'm closing, but I, I, I'm taking more time than I, I wanted to take. Prophet Muhammad uh, established for us that we should pursue excellence in everything. Uh, he said, whenever the believer does, does a thing, our or indulge in something, or embark, uh, uh, says he, he, he tries to perfect it. Whether it's uh, his prayer, or slaughtering for halal, or, or, or doing an artwork, or, or, or doctor and, uh, in his field, whatever it is, he's always striving for excellence. And that's universal for man. That's universal for man. That's in our nature to do that. That's the excellence of our nature. And uh, our, our religion teaches us also, we will read the Quran, uh, it says, uh, speaking of, the, of what, what, what we have as a hope for us, as models for us, Prophet Muhammad speaks of his companions, the first followers of his, those great people who joined him and, 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 and gave their whole life and all their wealth and everything, and gave everything they had for the, for the, for the survival of Islam against uh, idolatry in uh, Mecca, against the uh, threats of idolatry and the brutal treatment that they were receiving. And... Um, preached the religion, and, and, and with God's help, they were victorious. Prophet Muhammad says that those people are also examples for us. Not just the Prophet himself, we follow his example, his sunnah, that's a must. But they are also an example for us. But how are we to follow them? The Prophet said, follow their excellence. Their excellence. Their excellence. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't say too much. <laughs> Thank you very much. May God guide us always. I mean.
I, I, I invite you to ask questions if you like, and I hope I can answer. If I can't, I do have a friend here and a couple of friends here. I have some, I have some African American Muslims here who are very learned, and I also have some non African American friends and colleagues here that are very learned. So, please, if I get in trouble, I know who to call on. I can call on somebody else. Any question? We would like to be known the way we would like to be known, and we haven't been known that way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a some yes sir Yes yeah. Yes yes it is a conflict it is a conflict of emotions uh, and for a conflict of conscience for many. But for me, it's no conflict of conscience uh, when I know that I'm on the right side. That's right. Once, I know I'm <laughs> Once I know I'm on the right side, I have no conflict of conscience. Um, and um, uh, in, the, in the war with uh, Iraq, um, I had no conflict of conscience at all. I didn't, ha I didn't rush into my decision. I thought it out very carefully. And I, I looked at his behavior, I looked at what he stands for, and I said, I'm not to see a Muslim when I'm looking at this man. I'm to see him based upon his own ideas, his own aspirations, his own uh, ideology, and most of all, his behavior. Because the prophet made behavior the, uh, uh, the, 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 the criteria for us accepting somebody. If, if they say they're Muslim and they behave like savages, then we are not to accept them as Muslim. Uh, so that's what I saw. I saw a savage in his military conduct. The military conduct of he is savage, savage conduct. He shamed us, uh, and I think all Muslims should have denounced him throughout the world. Muslims should have denounced him, and Muslims should have saluted uh, America for helping uh, weaker Muslim, uh, weaker, weaker people who are Muslims against one who was very, very strong and perhaps would have just walked over everybody there. We don't know, but I, but he could have perhaps just marched over everybody. Uh, even Saudi Arabia, and that's what we feared. Uh, and I knew the Saudis were, were not going to accept him, you know. So he perhaps could have taken over the holy precincts. Now, wouldn't we want a savage like that, taking over the holy precincts? So I thank America many times. I thank you again. I thank the military. I thank the army. I thank all of you. And um, uh, I told my sons, I'd, I'd be proud that uh, my sons were in the military, you know. And at one time, I let you in know something else. At one time, I refused the draft because I was of a different mind. I was followed by Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I believed in him, and I still honor and respect the great things that he did. Though I reject some of the other things, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I don't bite my tongue, I let people know that's wrong, and we can't accept those things anymore. Uh, uh, I, I look back at that, and I say, oh, boy, I wish, that, I wish circumstances had been different. I would like to be in uniform, and I'd like to be the officer just like this officer here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I don't see any conflict of conscience. Not when a Muslim is properly informed, but most of us are not properly informed, and that's the big problem. We have to, we imams and teachers of the religion, we have to get on our job and do more to make sure that uh, the Muslim community is properly informed of what just what is Islam, because many of us don't don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. There any any other questions? Well, I don't want to I don't want to prolong, but it means a whole lot for me to go on the tour too. <laughs> That's a big part of that by day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We're going to ask the ma'am to stay here just a second because we'd just like to give him a little token, a couple of tokens of our appreciation for what he's done. And uh, on behalf of the religious community here in the uh, Pentagon, this is a, a line drawing of the Pentagon, and it says, an appreciation for your enhancement of spiritual understanding and unity in the Pentagon on this date. And you certainly have fulfilled that this statement, is, sir, and is, we thank this, you so much. I will cherish this. Thank <laughs> you.
so much for me to receive this. Thank you so much. One more. All right. One more. Oh. Okay, this next uh, plaque here is for the imam for his leadership to the Muslims in the military by strengthening our unity, improving our morale, our camaraderie, and an appreciation for being U.S. service men and women. And uh, this is with sincerity from Muslims in the United States and throughout the United States. It reads, presented to Imam W.D. Muhammad from the Muslim military members. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay, at this time, uh, this ends the official program for the uh, lunch.